So continuing my Assassin's Creed video reviews collection that I've been making recently, today once more I'm reviewing another installment of the Assassin's Creed franchise. What's up everyone and welcome to a new video, my name is Omar with Real Gamer Review and today we are reviewing Assassin's Creed Unity almost 7 years after the release. Before starting the video, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe and click the bell icon as it really helps the channel to develop and deliver more relevant content for you guys. The adventure this time takes us to Paris during the French Revolution in 1789. The protagonist this time is called Arno, and unlike the installments that came afterwards, you only play with one character in Unity. Assassin's Creed Unity is an action-adventure stealth game set in an open-world environment. The game was meant to be rebuilt, with fencing being used as an inspiration for the new system in addition to returning weapons from previous games. Assassin's Creed Unity introduced the Phantom Blade. The Phantom Blade uses the mechanics of a crossbow to fire a silent projectile at a distance, while still serving the same role as the Hidden Blade in the previous Assassin's Creed games. Navigation for the game was also updated, new free run up and free run down commands were added to make it easier for the player to scale buildings in either direction but it had some issues as it was not as smooth as intended. In the installment that came afterwards, Syndicate, it was way better. Also, if you missed my recently released Syndicate review, it should show by now in the cards on the top right, and I'll link it below in the description as well. Additionally, Arno learns new moves throughout the game, but the player can also purchase new skills as well. With the updated larger crowds, new interactions with them are also available. The crowd presents many new activities appearing organically that the player can then choose to engage in at their leisure, killing some Templars in the street before they hurt innocent civilians, or chasing down a thief who has just pickpocketed somebody, or even threatening some bullies in the street. Completing a set of these crowd events gives you either a monetary reward or a piece of armor. For the first time, the series allows players to customize the character abilities, adopting a skill tree that enables players to assign points earned through gameplay to improve their skills in stealth, melee, and ranged combat and health. Players as well are able to customize their weapons, armor, and equipment to further complement their individual style of play. These weapons and armor have a level out of 5. The higher quality weapons you purchase or upgrade, the higher your level becomes. You also have a wider selection of weapons available compared to the previous installments, and those weapons include swords, axes, spears, rifle, pistols, and throwable items such as smoke bombs. Of course, most of them are locked when you begin the game, and you unlock them when you proceed further into the campaign. Assassin's Creed Unity also introduced cooperative multiplayer to the series. Players can enter taverns, which act as social hubs in the game, where you can see if any friends are playing the game at the current time. If they are currently in a mission, they will appear as a ghost version of their player, allowing you to approach it to request to join their mission. If accepted, you are transitioned to their game and both of you reset to the most recent checkpoint, and continue on from there. I'm not sure if this feature is still working till today because I don't have any friends playing Unity till now except for me. <clears throat> Unity also brought back a steady source of income like the ones in the It's You games. Arno is introduced to the cafe theater and is giving the opportunity to renovate it and receive its profits. The starting income of the cafe is 20 francs in 20 minutes and you can store 80 francs. After doing all the renovations and cafe missions, your income will be at around 5,000 francs and a storage of 15,000 francs. The cafe theater is not introduced in the game and players are left to find it for themselves. Renovating more rooms will unlock secret rooms and ultimately a secret passage to the assassin's hideout. Unlike most of the Assassin's Creed installments, Unity has only one means of transportation and that is your foot. Yes, there are no horses or carriages in this one. 
You can of course use the fast travel option once you unlock the synchronization points. This game introduced as well a new feature where the Templars can try to hunt you down inside the Animus. While that is happening, the operator responsible for you will open some sort of portal to move from one point to another, so it can be harder to track and lose them. During the journey between those two points, the history in the Animus gets messed up due to a few glitches and certain objects starts appearing from different time periods. There are missions as well related to that particular part where other assassins are stuck in between those two points and you can play those missions to save them. So long story short and to avoid any spoilers, gameplay, missions and story are pretty good although I had the feeling that the game was a bit dense with the amount of the side missions and side quests along with the new activities happening in the street. As the developer tried to put a lot of new things as Unity was considered some sort of a rebuild to the franchise when it came to the mechanics and the new activities. But despite that, still the game is very enjoyable and definitely this is not a deal breaker. The game featured one extra DLC that contained extra story and missions under the name of Dead Kings. I played a bit of it and it seems pretty good but if you are interested guys for me to make a separate video for it, leave a comment below. Coming to the graphics and visuals part, this game in particular was kind of revolutionary compared to the previous installments as it was considered the first Assassin's Creed installment to be exclusive on the new gen systems at the time, which were the PS4 and the Xbox One. Unlike the previous installment, Black Flag where it was released on PS3 and Xbox 360 as well. Ubisoft at the time actually had to downgrade the game from 60 frames per second to 30 frames per second with updates and patches for the PS4 and the Xbox One to be able to run the game at a steady frame rate as it was struggling to hit 60 frames per second, especially with the improved NPC crowds. Up to 1000 individual AI characters can appear in a crowd on the screen at the same time in this game. And whenever that was happening on the screen, it was putting a lot of load on the CPU and GPU for both the PS4 and the Xbox One. So probably can imagine how much the visuals and graphics were upgraded at the time for this game. And it really tells as this game still looks pretty good in 2021 and doesn't look outdated at all compared to other games that were released in the same time period. Paris buildings, streets, roads and textures, NPCs, Everything that this game has to offer when it comes to the visuals and graphics is just amazing. The only thing that I've noticed is that in some areas of this game there is a lot of pop-up textures, especially with the outfits of the NPCs. Although I'm playing this game on the high settings on PC, but still this issue doesn't happen a lot and it is not a deal breaker as well. As I mentioned before, the game is pretty good as well on PS4 and Xbox One with the latest updates, although it still struggles a bit when there are a lot of things happening on the screen at the same time. Of course, you will get a smoother experience if you play it on the Xbox One X or PS4 Pro. You can go as well to the next level if you play it on the new gen consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox series with the backwards compatibility features. As I always mention with most of the Assassin's Creed installments, Ubisoft are pretty good when it comes to portraying music that puts you in the right mode for the era the game is set in. And I would say they did a good job as well with this installment. The audio part when it comes to the fighting mechanics, new weapons, the tons of NPCs introduced in Paris streets, and the voice actings are all pretty good. Unfortunately, I won't be able to put any music for you guys to check it out in the video for copyright reasons, but I will leave you with a few clips to check out the audio effects and judge it yourselves. Come here! I'll smack you silly over the drunken milk! Oh, my God. 
Despite this game being released almost 7 years ago, and although it had its share of visual issues when it was first released, but still it was one of the Assassin's Creed installments that kept the core essence and soul of the old Assassin's Creed games that we all loved and I'm personally a fan of. Not to send the wrong message, I still love the newer installments of the franchise, but I always felt that they slightly diverted away from how an Assassin's Creed game should be. And it is slowly turning out to be a totally different game. So as with my previous review for Syndicate, going back and playing Unity again in 2021 after playing all the newer Assassin's Creed installments, I really had a blast and I enjoyed every moment of this amazing game and I again truly remembered how an Assassin's Creed game should be. So if you didn't play this game before and you are in the market for a new discounted game or it was on the shelf for a long time, I would definitely recommend playing this game in 2021. Alright, time to wrap this up, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, then leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.